Here's the AMD BIOS guide. So I brought out the old PC just to do this guide. There is gonna be some settings that are completely different on Uran just because this is a third generation Ryzen processor instead of a newer processor. So whatever newer one that you have is gonna have way more settings for things like precision boost overdrive. But anyways, most of these settings should still apply on generations of Ryzen all the way up to AM5. So we're gonna to go to overclocking settings and then obviously AXMP set this to profile one now on this specific cpu i do have an overclock on this to 3733 but as of this video we're just going to set it to xmp just to make things easier for everyone but cpus that don't end in x3d so let's just say a ryzen 5 3600 or a ryzen 5 3600 x or a ryzen 7 7700 x or a ryzen 7 5800 x these cpus need good ram or they need a memory overclock to perform better so make sure to buy and spend money on good ram or just get your ram overclocked or overclock it yourself that's pretty much how you're going to get a lot of performance boosts just from doing that. Now, if you have an X3D CPU, it doesn't really matter as much. Just get some decent 3,600 megahertz kits and then you're fine because those X3D CPUs have something called L3 cache and they have way more of it than these like regular CPUs. But anyways, go to advanced CPU configuration, disable SVM mode and X mode. If you are on AM5, so Ryzen 7000, do not disable this on MSI. On other motherboards, you can disable it, but on MSI, this for some reason, whenever I was disabled, it on certain PCs, it would not let the PC boot on 7000 series. But if you're on anything older, it's fine to disable. PSS support also disable that. Spread spectrum, same thing. Then go to AMD overclocking, precision boost overdrive. Recommend just setting it to advanced and then PBO limits to motherboard. And then precision boost overdrive scaler, just set that to manual and leave it on 1x. And then max CPU boost clock override, just type 200 on that. And then SMT control, for most of you, just leave this enabled. If you have overheating issues, disable this. However, 99% of the time on AMD, I just leave this enabled. LM2 mode 2, just disable that, it's useless. LCLK DPM, 100% disable that. And then you might have something called curve optimizer in this menu. If you do have that, you can just figure out how to use that on your own. Basically undervolt your CPU and get slightly better performance out of it because it runs cooler. But anyway, go back, go to AMD CBS, global C-state control, disable this if it's not already disabled. And then power supply idle control set to typical current idle. And then IO MMU, set this to disabled. LN2 mode one, same thing, disable this is pretty much useless. And then CPPC for both of these disable them however if you have a ryzen 9 and you have an x3 cpu for this page you're going to see something called cppc preferred cores and then you want to set that to basically cache now if you just have a regular ryzen 7 or anything below ryzen 9 just don't even worry about it that setting doesn't really matter it's only useful on a ryzen 9 then go back twice and then you're going to go to advanced dram configuration and then go to misc item and then power down enable disable this TSME, disable this, and then bank group swap, disable that, bank group swap, alt, enable that. Now, if you're on DDR5, AKA AM5 Ryzen, then don't worry about these two. DRAM latency enhance, set this to enable. This does help a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's only on MSI. And then UCLK div one mode, set that to UCLK equals MemCLK, just like that. And then you're gonna go to motherboard settings on the left, go to advanced, MSI driver utility installer, disable this, and then PCI subsystem settings. Resize bar support, if you have a 30 series graphics card or above, enable this. PCI eGen switch, max this out to Gen 3. Chipset, same thing. And then you're gonna disable ASPM control. Then go back, go to USB configuration and disable the XHCI handoff. Go back again, go to super IO configuration, and then you're gonna disable the serial COM port. This is basically just like, a port for printing. So if you want to connect the printer, it's like a special, special port for that. So 99% of people don't even use this and it's very old, so just disable it. Go back, go to Windows OS configuration and then go to secure boot. If you have Windows 11, leave this enabled. If you have Windows 10, you can disable it. Otherwise, if you play Valorant and all that and CS2 or face it, leave this enabled. Go back and then you're gonna pretty much go to AMD overclocking, accept, and then you're gonna to go to SOC slash uncore OC mode. Set this to enabled and then press escape. Wait.
four times and then go to hardware monitor on the right and this is really important especially on these amd cpus you want the lowest possible temperatures so set this to full speed on all your fans because the lower temperatures on these cpu equals more cpu speed equals more fps and lower input delay now a lot of you run the stock amd cooler on these cpus because you've watched youtube videos that say that's fine or you just use whatever the cpu came with those cpu coolers are absolute trash i would recommend getting a all-in-one water cooler or just at least some decent air cooler like a thermal right peerless assassin or just something that's good that's pretty much it for the amd bio settings what you're gonna do what i would recommend is setting this to is that overclocking profile like that and then pressing f10 and then you can just save and exit and now ideally you would want to check your temperatures just like we, what we did in the intel bios optimization video load up a game and then check your temperatures using hw info 64. so we're gonna do that so let's get right into it all right so once your pc is back from the bios and it's completely booted up just go to the link in the description and go to hw info all you're gonna do is just hover over an installer and click low Cool, and then just install this program and for everyone i recommend doing this step just because it's really important to make sure that your bios settings are not causing your pc to overheat because if, if the pc is overheating you're going to have issues with performance so click sensors only on the hw info program and then click start and for you it's going to look a little bit different it's going to basically say cpu tcl slash ti that's pretty much the core temperature that you want to look at so just look for cpu tcl slash ti and launch your game now once you you have your game launched all you're going to do is you're going to have this program right here on your second monitor if you only have one monitor just set your game to windowed full screen and then on this program click the gear icon and click always on top right here and press ok and just have your game in windowed and then just check what your temperatures are while like for example you're shooting you're running around if you are reaching above 75 degrees on an amd processor whenever you're doing these things in game you are going to be losing performance so a lot of you guys are going to have realized that your cpu cooler is pretty bad so if you have this issue then some things that i would recommend trying is clearing out the dust inside of your pc making sure there's not too much dust inside of there and changing the thermal paste if you have not changed your thermal paste on your processor in around three years that's usually where it starts giving out and if all these do not help then you have to get a new cpu cooler or if you do know that your cpu cooler is terrible then just go get a new one now a pretty good cpu cooler is around 40 bucks so i'm not expecting a lot of you to have trouble affording that just go to the link in the description and cop that but if you want the best one it's going to be a water cooler and the reason you would get that is to get better temperatures and get better overclocking capabilities out of your processor and if you want overclocking done for you then either book a service on my website or just go to the discord server and make a ticket in there for overclocking services but with that out of the way make sure if you are going to be overheating that you go back to the bios and some settings that you should reset is global c state control set that back to auto and then your precision boost overdrives and set that back to enabled rather than advanced and the reason for that is just because these settings do increase temperatures a little bit and if you are already overheating then you do not need these disabled or configured just because you want the lowest possible temperatures so you could have a cpu that's running normally but once you've gotten the new cpu cooler or fix the temperatures you can just go back in the bios follow the video again and get that performance unlocked yeah that's gonna be pretty much it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed hope you guys liked this in the bio settings guide if you did comment down below hit the differences of your fps and input delay like this video share it with all the guys that you know that are on amd and if you want more things like optimizing your windows optimizing your complete bios even hidden bio settings and doing memory overclocks and cpu overclocks and gpu overclocks then go to my website or but anyways that's gonna be pretty much it hope you guys enjoyed peace out